Look who it is. What a blown out white face. That's what we're all here to see. Yes, that's right, folks. Welcome back to the only show worth watching on this godforsaken channel. <laughs> the Depression Chamber. Oh boy, can't wait to see how many trans people are sad today. I know you thought, hey, last time we covered all the rest of the trans stories, but it would seem some new ones have come in. So, it really, it's more of the same. Get a buzz cut, that's a good idea. I'm sick of this hair. How is the repeat louder than the original audio? Uh, is there something wrong with the audio? I don't know what you're talking about. Recovering from a liquor binge. Well, yeah, it's a good time to be here. And somebody said that they're perfectly high for this stream, so I'm jealous. Hook a brother up. I hear my cats crying at the door because they want to come in. Uh, I guess they have to go fuck themselves. Loud ass motherfuckers. Oh, Jacob, that was his own issue. Okay, with the audio. My hair is giving off boyish charm. Should I put on a hat? Because we certainly don't want any of that. I got a collection of hats we could try on instead of reading these stories. How's that sound? Uh, everybody, give the stream a motherfucking thumbs up like. That's right. We're begging for likes again. And I'm going to get us into a story. Wear the MAGA hat. Uh, that's not a bad idea, Alan. Dillon. Dillion. Reactor hat. It, here's my live reaction to your depression. What's up, Spurg? How we been Spurgin? Double for a filth. Thank you for the satanic donation. Now, folks, I'm gonna let you vote. Should we have the whimsical propeller hat or the reactor hat for this stream? And as soon as we put a hat on, I'll start the story. And we've got an interesting one today. Propeller or reactor. I hope I spelled propeller right. Either way, it's going to be a whimsical hat. Looks like Propeller had- Wow, 64 votes already! There better be- If there's 64 people voting, there better be 64 thumbs up on this fucking video. <laughs> you goddamn bastards. Only 39! Laziness. Such laziness. But Propeller Hat will win the day. Okay. This is how we react to people's stories now. And, uh, we've got- we've got a tough one. We've got a canon- important canon story for the monkey lore coming up because it would seem that Toot, the infamous character from the MCU, Monkey Cinematic Universe, Toot herself was inspired by the, the Oops All Transgender Story stream and she had submitted her life story and I know it's really from her because it's fucking John K. Clips fucking Gmail account and she's obsessed with the John K. Oh, Spee says, no, please don't read it. You guys don't want to hear about Toot. Because I was, I was intrigued. I'm excited to read this one. So let's do it. Uh, this is called Toot, the real last trans story. Let's get a spin of the hat. There we go. Well, kind of. You'd rather watch BoJack Horseman. Me too. Hey Jimmy, I decided after stumbling upon your last stream that was full of Troon stories, I decided to give my own life story. When I was a kid, it started with where else for a Troon, an abusive father. But he wasn't abusive in one direction, it was more like he would beat me just for bothering him or getting in his way, so that gave me the green light to basically not give a fuck and act out in school without consequence. So I had a weird state where I feared my dad, but knew he wouldn't push me into doing shit I didn't want to. There was good times because of him I got into Ren and Stimpy and my John K. blog reading cartoon, uh, uh, flag it. I'm, I'm gonna try to stop saying words that get the channel banned. A uh, flag it interest developed, which to you is probably a negative. Sorry for being an ass about it a year and a half ago. 
But he was pretty much a scumbag. My dad's abusive ways rubbed off on my little sister, who since she was five started beating me up. I knew if I tried to hit back, my dad could have been aler alerted, resulting in a worse beating, so I just curled up in a ball and took it. When I was around 12, there was an incident where she started chasing me around the house with a knife, and a neighbor called the police when I came out bawling my eyes out. My mom had to come home from work, and she was as pissed at me as she was with her because I didn't want to get stabbed. My mom would try to discipline me in ways like grounding me, but it would devolve to the point where she had to physically restrain me from trying or watch TV uh, to watch TV or leave the house, and she just gave up by the time I was eight. I feel like I might have broken her mentally, which I feel bad for now, but it was also her fault for staying with a man who beat both of us and did nothing for so long, you know. Anyway, around the time I turned 11 or 10, my dad and mom had split up for a few years, and around that time I got expelled from public school, and by middle school I was transferred to a school for kids with behavioral problems. There was a major problem with that. I, for the most part, was just kind of an asshole, not really violent. I pulled fire alarms and shit like that, but I never got into fights because I was a huge pussy. This school was full of a lot of violent assholes, so I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these kids are in jail now. I also should note that a lot of these were basically men already in middle school. Puberty had hit them early, while I didn't start it until I was around 14 or 15. Needless to say, I got beat up a lot by many other kids from grades 6 to 8. One guy there would sucker punch me in the face if I ever got under his skin. This one psychotic girl who was a year older then would beat me up and on one occasion gave me a cigarette burn with a smoke she somehow snuck into the school. Though a lot of kids there smoked in the school, even if it was against the rules, most of the teachers didn't want to deal with the hassle. And we even had kids who would sometimes beat the shit out of me and other times we'd hang out. One of them, I won't say his name, but he was actually someone I had a huge crush on so maybe I developed some sort of Stockholm Syndrome type thing in the situation. I recall when there was a teacher who pissed me off. I decided I could get him fired if I said he touched me when I was a stupid 11 year old. Needless to say, I fessed up that he was innocent and I was full of shit, but beyond that unknown to me at the time, this really put me in a boy who cried wolf situation two years later. That's, that's bad. You you should be locked up for that one. What broke me further was actually, uh, was being actually raped by a woman when I was 13. And because I made that colossally stupid decision when I was 11, I thought no one would believe me when it actually happened and never told either parent. It started when I was visiting my dad at his apartment during the day. He had two friends over and one of them was his friend's drug addicted GF. My dad thought it was such a great idea to go to the bar with his friend and leave me alone with his drug-addicted GF. That day, this woman, who was probably on some sort of drugs at the time, told me to come to the bathroom with, or bedroom with her. I went, thinking it was kind of weird, but not questioning it, and that's where she pinned me to the bed and raped me. After that had happened, I was pretty much fucked for life, completely traumatized, and because of the dumb shit I did two years earlier, no one would have believed me. So I lived the next two years suffering in silence and began to develop a loathing of my male body after that event, and male puberty only made me further uncomfortable in it. Being male basically became associated with being unsafe and free to beat or abuse in my mind. And well, this trauma connected to my rape developed into gender dysphoria. This event also had the effect of me having a fear and hatred against women, oddly enough, which has calmed since, but the fear is still there. When I was 15, I got really into the old 2014-2016 anti-SJW wave. Hey, you know, for the real people, it never ended. The anti-feminist and MRA points, uh, a lot of them were making obviously appealed to me as a male rape victim, uh, to use a two-word phrase I'm known for. I still believe in pretty much everything from back then, that's right. I probably believe in a more extreme version now. I never went into being a fun policing woke troon, which I always despised, but 
through this community, I found Blair White, whose videos on gender dysphoria made me start questioning and eventually made me transition. Back then I thought it was okay, uh, I was an effeminate little boy, and while I didn't really desire to be a girl as a kid, once puberty hit, I had become super uncomfortable being a guy and in a male boy ignoring that those feeling started to come up because I was raped. Obviously, being trans made trans people more visible to me, and that's where my hatred for most of them started to get more and more intense until those hideous... Okay, I gotta... <laughs> you guys are trying to get my channel banned. Those hideous blank who threw a tantrum over <laughs> Dave Chappelle made me disown the idea of even bothering with them. Fuck fun police, they should all die. Okay, you know what, Toot? I welcome you back into the community. I, I'm really liking what you're saying so far. To this day, I want nothing to do with other blanks in my life besides one friend I trust. Wow, big perp with a $50 donation to say what the fuck, women. Uh, thank you, man. That's, uh, that's pretty big. Through this, I started he uh, hearing that some people become trans because of trauma, and that made things click in my head. I probably only ever had dysphoria because some sick-in-the-head cunt raped me and started to be depressed and angry that I'd never have to deal with this had this not happened to me. Hostile feelings towards women started swelling up again, and with our UK Ukraine proxy war starting and then men being banned from leaving that country, it gave me an outlet to spew that venom. This made me lose a really supportive friend who was a woman who I've since gained back. Am I still a misogynist? Yeah, probably, but I'm also racist. <laughs> that seems more like a, an and situation rather than a but, but that's funny. Am I still a misogynist? Yeah, probably, but I'm also a racist and absolutely transphobic, so I'm just a general bigot who's calmed down since. I also did a soft detransition where I shaved my head and started living as a guy again, but still took HRT. Why? Why on earth? Two years later, I've come to the conclusion that what happened, happened, and it's not good to just sulk and feel sorry for myself and stew in anger about what could have been. My rapist already died a few years ago from a drug overdose, and hopefully she's burning in hell. I agree. So at this point, it's better to move on and try to make the most with the cards I've been dealt. I have gender dysphoria because of trauma, and now I've come to a state of acceptance about it. Whether I'll retransition in the future, I don't know. I'll just see how the winds blow. I'll just live the best life I can for now. Also, Mumkey, I'm sorry for my behavior in your server a couple of years ago. I was being an ass about stupid cartoon shit. For that, I apologize. It's okay, Toot. I, I don't think I ever cared that much. I, I, I think the main issue was that every time we banned you, you kept coming back. That was what pissed me off. I... <laughs> I was just doing it for the good of the community. Is this story AI generated? Find me an AI that will write any of that. And I'll pay for it. Because I don't think it exists. A DA manual. Not only is he creating these amazing intros for the streams, but now he's a member of the Measly Few. Doughboy, thank you for asking. I forgot to do my, my ritual of asking if we hate the author. So, do we hate this author? Let's get the poll going. Uh, this, I just remembered, uh, somebody messaged me on Twitter asking about, if you remember from the last stream, uh, we read a story where the, the writer said they were going to kill themselves on a certain date, and unfortunately I received the email, like, three years ago. And we did reply, you know, who knows what we replied with, who can say, who can remember, but we did reply to, to check if they're still alive. And somebody messaged me on Twitter asking, hey, did they ever reply? No, they did not. <laughs> they did not. Uh, Dave Yogurt the second becomes a member of the Measly Few, thank you. One time I called you on the phone because you posted your number. Yeah, I remember that. That, I mean, it was not my real phone number. It was, uh, you can get like a, a text now app on your phone. 
I certainly would not put my real phone number as the title of a video, but... Uh, let's see. <laughs> really left him hanging, yep. It looks like about half of you hate this author. Wow. Wow, Toot, if we, if we did this poll, do you hate Toot? Before we read the story, it probably would have been... <laughs> probably would have been a different result. So maybe hearing somebody's life story, you know, you can get some empathy. You can understand where they're coming from. You hear their apology. And 50% of us are capable of forgiveness. And uh, maybe not love, but a lack of hate. So, you know what, 50-50, that's pretty good. Sorry for leaving you hanging. Hey, I, I was pretty clear that we forgot about what I said. <laughs> you don't need to type it. <laughs> yeah, I responded, damn bro, that's crazy. Uh, my parents divorced because they caught me watching Monkey Jones stops a school shooting. Well. They weren't meant to be, so I did you a favor. Let's find a new story. And this one is called, My Mother's Only Fans Ruined My Life. And to be honest, given that a lot of these stories are submitted by, like, children, you know, like ages 11 through 15, I'm surprised we have not gotten a lot more stories because uh, we're in the ho generation, baby, okay? There's there's going to be a shocking number of children whose lives are ruined because their mom's a fucking e-whore. So maybe this will be the first of a whole new genre of story. Randy says Toot and I never ar argued. I, I think Randy and Toot should start their own podcast. I'd listen to that. Finally, a based story coming up. That's weird. It says uh, it was written by Jacob W. Is this you? Jacob, is that you? No, I'm lying. Or am I? I I don't know. I think that this hat is almost giving me more of a boyish look. <laughs> anyway. A uh, new story. My mother's OnlyFans ruined my life. I am 14 years old and my mother is an OnlyFans whore. Uh... Uh-oh. Hopefully this is made up. Tonight I am going to game end myself after ending my mother's existence. This can't be true. This can't be real. This is my final message, or as you can call it, a suicide note. I can no longer bear my own existence and my life has been nothing but pain and torture. Uh, OS, welcome to the measly few. Thank you. This story may sound like a joke, but everything below actually happened to me. I really can't take it anymore, and I have to tell my story before I go. Now, I'm going to assume this is not a real murder-suicide, but just in case it is, and just in case the story is funny, why not just keep reading it? Why not? Uh, maybe we'll find a news report and that this is real. Only fans whore stabbed to death by teen son. <laughs> That's probably what the New York Times headline would say. Okay. Ever since I was born on a cold February day in 2010, I had to deal with a mother who cared more about sex, her multiple abusive boyfriends, and scumbag clients than her own child. For as long as I can remember, she would ignore my existence and treat me like a thorn in her side. She would yell at me, refuse to feed me, beat me, and lock me outside in the cold. <laughs> I dubs son story. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> hmm. When I was born, my mother posted educational videos on her YouTube channel of her breastfeeding me. In these videos, she was wearing next to nothing and treating me like a prop. Now, again, even if this is made up, I have seen videos that that are similar to this. You see that one where the. I'm not going to say the race of the person, and because I said that, you can guess. But the mother has her little baby, and she's just looking at her stupid TikTok stream or whatever, you know, talking to Facebook Live. And the baby grabs her vape, or f probably her THC fucking weed vape, It fucking puffs it up. And then she gets mad at the baby, because she wasn't paying attention. She says, I'm going to beat your little ass! Like, Jesus fucking Christ. So even if this is made up, there are scumbag... Dirt fucking humans with children out there, posting them online. Uh, how'd you know it was an Indian? How'd you know? Sounds like white people activity, yeah. Who could say? I think Nerd City made a video of this mom, did he really? Because I just saw that clip like a couple weeks ago on Twitter. 
Where can I submit stream intro edits? Uh, and uh, is there an art contest? There's a very loose art contest to make a new profile picture for this channel. And you can just send it to any email you want, Roblox Miner. You sent me some fan art fucking early this morning, so I know you know how. Anyway. Her YouTube channel was eventually terminated. The only reason I know about these videos is because she later posted them to a porn site and some kid at school found it and bullied me for it. Uh, when I think about this, I feel very violated because I know for a fact that some PDF degen like Cobb was- Oh my god. That's a deep cut. How do you know about Cobb? Was probably gooning to a video with a naked baby me in it. The earliest thing I remember in my life uh, I, my mother, tying me up, putting some sort of tape over my mouth and locking me in a dark closet. She was yelling at me to shut up while her boyfriend at the time was laughing at my pain. They then proceeded to have loud sex in the other room while I cried and pleaded for help. I can also remember that same boyfriend sexually violating me and beating me. My mother did nothing to stop him and she probably wanted him to kill me. Because of the bruises on my body, she refused to take me out in public. I never got to interact with other children, and she did not send me to preschool. This is all because she didn't want to get in trouble or exposed for child abuse. Eventually, that boyfriend was arrested for stealing a car and attempting to rob a gas station with a gun. After that happened, I never heard of him again, and I don't remember his name, so I can't look up his name in public records. I won't ask my mother because I fucking hate her and don't want to interact with that human trash. Because of the lack of social interaction with other children at a young age, I was a social outcast and very autistic. I had and still have no social skills or friends, and it is all my whore of a mother's fault for bringing me into this dis disgusting evil world. Spelled D-I-S-C-U-S-T-I-N-G. Disgusting. For as long as I can remember, my mother has always told me that I am a waste of space and that I shouldn't ever have been born. When I started going to school, she wouldn't pick me up from school if she was called by the nurse due to me being sick. She would then proceed to force me to go back to school the next day for the same thing to happen. She wouldn't pay for my school lunches and wouldn't provide me with any lunch. We did not meet the requirements for free school lunch, so I had to starve every day. Keep in mind, this was all in kindergarten. From the day I started school, she would force me to go to school even if I was sick or even in pain because she just wanted to do porn or OnlyFans every day. Eventually, in the second grade, I was given free school lunches because my teacher was concerned that I wasn't eating lunch. This really helped me out and I am grateful to this day uh, for his act of kindness. This was around the time where my mother was a prostitute. She would invite multiple men or multiple men, you can guess how that's spelled, uh, over every evening and sometimes she would let them beat me. I believe still to this day that she enjoyed being a prostitute because she still sometimes does it to this day even though she makes a lot of money from OnlyFans. When I was eight years old, in 2016, OnlyFans was created. This was the worst thing that ever happened to me because this was when my mother started. She was one of the first OnlyFans creators, and because of this, she made a lot of money. Despite this, she still refused to buy me new clothes, feed me, or even take me to the doctor. When she started OnlyFans, she would spend every waking hour taking photos. She had no time to be a mother, and she still worked as a prostitute. One day, someone at my school, when I was in about fifth grade, showed me my mom's OnlyFans, and everyone started to bully me. Are fifth graders on OnlyFans? I, I don't know. Fatestuber says this sounds very similar to what happened to my friend. I think I might know who this is. Well, did you introduce any of your friends to this channel? Because it'd be a pretty good fucking bet. Anyway. Uh, one of the videos they showed me was filmed in my bedroom. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> in this video, she was putting one of my Minecraft figures in her snatch. I I don't think I believe this. I don't think that's true. I'm not hanging out with the right fifth graders, yeah. Uh, when I saw this video, I was 
revolted and I ran to the top of the school and tried to jump off. Unfortunately, one of the teachers prevented me from jumping, but thankfully did not bother sending me to a mental hospital. Or hospital. She actually had no idea I was trying to jump off the building. She was in stayed yelling at me, telling me to go back to class. She brought me to the principal's office to discipline me for not being in class. This teacher is either brain dead or fucking retarded. Whatever it is, I hope she gets AIDS <laughs> because she deserves it for preventing me from jumping off the building. From this point on, none of the other kids wanted to interact with me. I don't know if, I mean, if I, if I could make friends with the OnlyFans mom kid and, you know, go over for a play date, you know, maybe I, I might be going for that in fifth grade. I don't know. If someone tried to talk to me, even in a classroom environment, they would be shunned for talking to me. Everyone saw me as subhuman because my mother did OnlyFans. The worst thing was that the teachers didn't care even if the other students were showing me actual porn. I get the feeling that they wanted me to suffer for my mother's degeneracy. When I started middle school is when my life truly went downhill. I was hoping for a new start where none of the kids would know about my mother, but I was stupid for thinking that. On the first day, I saw some of the students from my elementary school and I knew I was fucked. That same day, kids started making fun of me and bullying me. There was this one kid named Brad who was a big fat guy with a lot of acne on his face, started to beat me and constantly tell me that my mother was a slut. This still happens to this day and I get the feeling he want to fuck my mom, but I won't say that to his face because I swear he would kill me if I did that. Middle school was hell on earth. Everyone bullied me and nobody talked to me. All the teachers didn't care or do anything about it and my grades suffered because of it. I was held back a year, so still to this day I am stuck in middle school. It's not my fault my mother is an OnlyFans whore and I have no reason to live because society judges me for the actions of others. I will not fail to end my suffering tonight because I have no other choice. Life is pain and everything is a lie. My whore of a mother will pay the ultimate price because she has no right to live on due to the suffering she has caused me. I wish I was aborted and I would be better off dead. Whatever happens, I will be sure that she suffers. At least I know how to tie a noose thanks to Rusty Cage's family-friendly noose song. Rest in peace, Rusty. I'll be joining you soon. Keep yourself safe and keep up the good work. Be glad your mother isn't an OnlyFans slut. Yeah, Fates Tuber, is your friend dead? Is your friend a, a dead person now? Or as the Zoomers say, UNALIVE! <laughs> fucking pussy generation can't even say fucking kill or dead or nothing. Fucking unalived. I'm putting that on the pathetic list on Thursday, you fucking Zoomers. No more copy pastas, please. I gotta run it through the copy pasta analysis thing. Make sure it's uh, original. Uh, did he ever say if it, that was his dead friend? No, he's an edge lord. Okay. Maybe he didn't go through with it. Somebody submitted a story four minutes ago that says, Fan of Asperger, the liquor's calling the shots now, monkey. Okay. Good to know. Three stories in. <laughs> that was the third one. Monkey, get a story and put it through ChatGPT and make it family friendly. ChatGPT will not generate stuff like that. It won't. It will refuse. You, it won't. It will never say the word rape to you other than like a fucking dictionary definition context. Let's see. Do we do we hate the the OnlyFans uh, son? Yes or no? Let's get to voting. Yeah, shout out to everybody who watched the new episode of the Monkey Box over on the Simeon Jimmy channel. New video up if you haven't seen it yet. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, Esoteric Passion, thank you for becoming a member of my Patreon. Cool. And, uh, better make sure I didn't miss... Any Streamlabs donations before we go to the next story? 
Okay, that was that, uh... Wow, the Roblox Miner really is a chick, because that was a chick name uh, on the donation. I didn't believe you, but uh, then again, you could also be lying on fucking PayPal. Yeah, Monkey Box, and uh, I'm currently working on even the next Monkey Box. Uh, Weekend Warrior and I are comparing uh, MVP to Air Bud, so we might get some doggy hijinks as well. You switched your Patreon to the channel member? Hey, either way is fine with me. There's uh, different perks on both, I guess. Uh, let's find a new story. And it looks like 69% of you hated the the son of the OnlyFans whore. Maybe we should have done a poll, was that story real? Because my guess would be no. Yeah, I know it's not ChatGPT because every other word is fucking spelled wrong. So if anything, it's somebody's creative writing story, but that's fine. What was the actual saddest depression chamber? Ah, I don't know. Mostly after these streams end, I forget everything that happened. <laughs> I'm not, my brain's not even turned on. I'm on autopilot right now. I'm not thinking before I speak. That's why it's so dangerous. It's so dangerous over here. <laughs> yeah, the one where they went bodies, where it was so boring, we skipped half the fucking story, and yet we're still talking about it. The woe is me. <laughs> yeah, but they spelled woe different than you did. What are we drinking tonight? The same thing as always. Fucking K-cup curing coffee. To keep my ass awake. Oh yeah, the guy who's in agonizing pain, and I posted that as its own video on this channel, I think. Uh, the guy who got gaddafi I think. Like, they kicked him in the nuts so hard that he, like, fucking crippled him for life or something. Granny Gooner in the Bullfrog Ghetto. That was pretty sad. Finish the Go Bodies story? We finished it. We just skipped a few paragraphs that sucked. Okay, uh... Here's a short one. How the banks steal my memory. Hi, Mumkey. I'm a big fan. I've been watching for years since you were deleted. I stopped taking my meds again a couple weeks ago, and I keep re-watching the wheel videos. Thanks for your contact. It really helps. I uh, probably meant content. I realized a couple of years ago that the banking system was using rays in the machines to speak to my undermind and take out my thoughts through extraction, but my family medicated me and I stopped thinking about it. But I ran out and did not get more, and I feel good. I think a lot. If you've ever seen the pyramids, the, symmet the symmetry is like New York buildings, and it's because they form the same people. And they have the banks now, too. Literally all of the wars. Look, Monkey, there isn't a way to avoid talking about this, and it needs to be heard, and I want to tell you. If you're thinking about the machines in the cities by the buildings, they're... There are decorated like the tombs, obviously. But then it occurred to me, they need the machines and the buildings to take my thoughts because I am thinking about them and I have them caught red-handed. I am writing the chamber to tell you all that this is not okay. <laughs> There's no way any of us hate this guy. <laughs> you gotta like him. <laughs> Do we like the bank author? I like him a lot. I want to. He should have wrote way more. That was too short. I think he might be onto something. Like, the architecture of New York City buildings is the same as the pyramids. And if you deny that, maybe you should be on medication. Oh, I. Instead of saying hate, I did say like. I was surprised that it was 82% yes for a second. <laughs> I, was, I guess I was a little biased in the question, huh? Do we like the bank author? Okay, it's everybody likes him. If you said no, we don't care about you. Your opinion is discarded. Uh, I don't remember this, but some guy said, Update on my story. Well, monkey, it looks like I'll be going to fucking jail. Turns out I killed that guy. Who knows what that's about? Okay, here's a, here's a real story, fucking finally. Uh, and there's no title. 
For the sake of anonymity, as well as for my own dignity, I will call myself C. Around the start of 2019, I had inherited a gardening landscaping store in rural western Illinois from my deceased father. As his oldest son, I was to take primary ownership of the company and my brother would handle logistics slash supplies. While I offered my wife an opportunity to take over as manager of the store, which she agreed to. The first two years of ownership appeared to be very successful and the company had significant returns. The issue is that my brother would come to me about two years later telling me while I was in office for the day that I needed to see something in the back of the building. Apparently, while he was in the process of installing an updated security camera, a uh, plus 480p for the win, he reviewed some camera footage recorded from the previous week during the after-hour work time frames. My wife looked like she was wrapping up, locking a few entrance doors in the cash register. Everything appeared normal other than a few lingering male customers in the shop. I shrugged to my brother, but he shushed me and told me to give it a few minutes. After a bated breath, I noticed my wife directing three of the customers, all male, to follow her to her office. Once they entered, it turned out that these guys were customers, but for something else. And let's just say she was doing part-time work as a locomotive operator. Let's just leave it at that. A lot of fucking and sucking going on. Okay, so I guess he did not leave it at that. Uh, all I remember in those brief moments was darting my eyes off into the corner of the empty room in that video and muttering, Oh fuck, oh no, oh god, shit, shit, like I was 11 years old watching my first live leak video. My brother shot, shut the footage off and I screamed at him, what the fuck, and pushed him. I know he didn't do anything, but he was seeing the brunt of my rage at that point. He was revealing something important to me, like any decent brother, friend, or well-intending person would have done in that situation, but I was blind with rage. He did push me back and I reacted by hitting him in the jaw. After that, he swore off helping me with any of it and left. I never felt so scorned by the world ever in my life. The blood and sweat that my father and his sons put into this beloved family trade was destroyed in less than five minutes by a roasty bitch that I had put years and years of trust and energy into. One that first met me when I was young and bright-eyed about the world, green to the reality of women and relationships. I had thought that we both saw each other grow and learned so much from one another, but I guess you can't really truly know someone and their intentions. I guess that's just a common fact of life that I was late to the game in understanding. Though we had two kids, my family could still afford to live a well-off lifestyle, occasionally being able to spend some of our extra income on Florida vacations, Gucci bags, and loafers, and I even bought my wife a fancy Mercedes convertible to drive around in, though I'm more of a 90s truck guy myself. Anyways, yeah, fuck that whore. She took half of my estate because I trusted her enough to withhold from getting a prenup. Uh, she decided to buy a condo in the busier part of Springfield while I'm still paying 45k in remainder for this shack in the woods. By court order, because of a previous DUI, I only get to see the kids on weekends. I have to drive to the city to see them, but my ex-wife is adamant about me never driving them, and she damn sure won't drive them to me. I already hate driving to the city and I can't fucking stand city slickers. I learned from my TikTok account that there's this thing called MGTOW on the internet. While I identify with that 100% and have a general distrust of women and become pretty quick to anger with them. At this point I don't give a shit about my prostitute ex-wife specifically and I almost feel like I've made peace in some sense, but my bigger concern is my relationship with my brother. We've sort of patched things up once he decided to speak to me after eight months of silence between him and I. Our situation left me having to take leave of ownership duty for two months and had an employee serve as an intermediary to communicate between my brother and I for the remaining six months. Though we had a conversation a little over a year ago, which ended in us resolving our situation, I partly feel this is because my brother may had motivation to convince me to give him ownership of the family business. I did to do so 
as I was not in the right state of mind to oversee everything and work around the shop was getting behind. What do you think, Monkey? Do you think my brother was looking out for us and the family legacy in the long run? Or do you think he was trying to manipulate me? Part of me thinks that the family business may not continue if I didn't give it to Sneed, but I just don't know. Hmm. Okay. Oh, no, this makes sense, because he... His name is Chuck. So just to be clear, <laughs> Chuck owned the feed and seed, but after his whore wife was caught fucking, he gave it to his brother Sneed. So now instead of Chuck Sneed and feed, it's <laughs> seed and feed. Now it's now it's Sneed's feed and seed. Okay, another real story in the books. <laughs> another legit story. <laughs> I should have known when his fucking name said Chuck. Jesus. Now, I mean, guys, that one was clearly a joke. I mean, the punchline, it, it's revealing the truth of why the sign says formerly Chucks. It's not a, a sick suck and fuck joke, okay? This guy put in the elbow grease. He made it work. Yeah, the city slickers should have gave it away. He did say there was sucking and fucking going on. He did say that. <laughs> Can you read mine pretty please? I don't know which one yours is. Goffle Elliot. How am I supposed to know? Found on Road Dead. What does that mean? Is that a Fiat? Found on Road Dead? Yeah, too, we read your story at the beginning, so go ahead and rewind. We all, we, all, uh, we voted and we decided we only half hate you now. So you've been redeemed. Okay. Uh, we don't need to vote on the Sneed story, I don't think. Here's a new story called How I Lost My First Girlfriend. Oh my lord. I wrote to you a couple times over the years. You read one of my stories in 2019 and another in 2020. Well, now I've returned with another story about my life. I'll try to keep this short unlike that guy we heard today talking about M or whatever the fuck. So let's begin. For most of my life, I've never had a girlfriend. In high school, I never dated anybody. I probably could have, but my autism got in the way as I would usually run away from any sort of relationship out of fear. So I graduated high school and entered college with no relationship experience. Honestly, I was fine with that and had basically accepted that I wasn't going to date anybody in my life and that's just how it was. However, that changed in September of 2022. I met this girl, we'll call her Abby. Abby was unlike any girl I'd ever met before. She was intelligent, she was funny, she was kind. Yeah, so far it sounds like a pretty unique woman. <laughs> Smart, funny, and kind? Is this a unicorn of some sort? I don't know. And I felt like I was actually able to talk to her. She was more like a guy than a girl. I know it probably sounds cringe, but that's the only way I've thought to describe it. She was diagnosed with autism and some other things like schizophrenia. When we first met, she would complain to me about how the shadow people were stalking her at work and when she would lay in bed at night. That's probably when I fell in love. Just for clarification, this was an in-person relationship, not online, though we did use Discord for texting. Now, it's probably a bad sign if you fall in love when you find out the woman is mentally ill. I'm not going to say it reflects bad on you, I just think it's a bad sign. You feel me? You see where I'm coming from? Okay. Uh, for most of its run, our relationship was very good. We were always together, we talked every day. She would actually talk to me about things and if we had any sort of problem, we'd be able to talk about it and it seemed perfect. We mostly agreed on everything, but if there was anything we didn't agree on, it seemed we would still be able to understand each other's opinions. I guess I always knew it was too good to be true. I just figured that maybe I had got lucky for the first time in my life. Maybe I should still see it that way. In September 2023, she disappeared. At least that's what it seemed like. I didn't hear from her for a couple days and I tried contacting her with no success. I found out that she had checked herself into a mental hospital after she tried to kill herself. After that, she mostly isolated herself for the next couple months. 
She was there for three months and I spoke to her maybe twice, not for a lack of trying. Then on November 25th, 2023, she messaged me again. She was at her parents' house now. The message was, was terrible and for months I couldn't understand. I don't understand now, I just have been able to move on since then. Her message basically said that I was a shitty person, that I used her, that I never cared about her. She said that I was a drain on her life, that I complained too much, that I never wanted to get better, stuff like that. It hurt me really bad because none of it was true. She knows it wasn't true. She has to. There are messages in our Discord DMs that she pinned that prove that I cared. I distinctly remember sitting there for two hours not saying a single word as she trauma dumped to me about her childhood. Why didn't I say anything? Because she asked me to just listen, so I did. She says that I would complain. She complained about her life all the time, much more than I did. And maybe I made the mistake of thinking our compassion was mutual. Anyway, I know it sounds like I was complaining there, sorry. I'm not mad at her for venting because it's true that I did it too. What hurt is that she had to lie and make up this weird fantasy in her head about me using her when we both agreed that we were okay with sharing our feelings to each other multiple times. There was always boundaries and we were always clear about what, uh, what they were. I thought that we had a mutual understanding and respect for one another and I think we did before she went to the hospital. If she just, if she had just wanted to break up with me, I think I could handle that. I'm no stranger to losing friends. But the way she just lied and threw all the time we spent together out the window and convinced herself that I didn't love her when she has to know that's wrong, I think I've only just started to get over it. It's been four months since that last message she, sh she sent me. For most of those months, I was nearly bedridden, just going to class and then coming home and sleeping my life away. If I owned a gun, I would have killed myself. I couldn't live without her. I still think about her every day. She was wonderful. But now I don't care as much anymore. My mind has traveled back to old spaces that cause me dread, like the state of the world. She is gone, not much I can do about it. I just don't understand what they did to her in that mental hospital. Before she left, we were still talking like normal and all seemed fine. Then she left and came back unrecognizable. Even now when I stalk her pages, she isn't the person I loved anymore. It's like they took all her agency away, now she's just a normal, vapid girl. Anyway, Mr. Simeon, that is the story of my first and only girlfriend. I don't know if I can handle another one. I felt as though I had what I wanted dropped into my lap and then she was taken. Hope this story wasn't too long. Oh, that was just the plot to El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie? I can't believe I didn't notice that. First we get tricked by Sneed, and now this? Woe is me, Schizo GF broke up with me. Yeah, hopefully, I don't know how old this dude is. Hopefully one day he realizes the fucking bullet that he dodged. Now, you know, it, this might seem rich coming from me, but if a woman has spent even one minute in a mental institution of any kind, just say no. You'd be better off fucking snorting meth. Don't even fucking bother. Don't even consider them human at that point. Definitely don't stick your dick in it. Move on. Find a normal person who's not mentally ill. There's got to be at least one out there. Uh, one of seven follow up my submission. I'll see if I can find that one. But I don't see that in here. It's not on the front page at least. Some guy sent me a picture of him taking a shit. Okay. Don't know if I'm going to read this one, but thanks for the photo. I did not mean to put one of seven. Okay. Oh, yeah. There it is. Oh. I remember you. Okay, we'll read this one. You miss Patchy? Well, Jacob, I mean, I think you already know this, but Patchy was just on the Velma and Daphne Is It Kino review. And uh, as a member, which you are, you can now access the 
uh, Patchy came back, me, Aggie, Patchy, and uh, Mrs. Patchy, we reviewed uh, Walk Hard, the Dewey Cox story, and that is currently available for members to watch. So there's plenty of Patchy in there. And Patchy's also in the chat. He says, I'm right here, man. Okay, we're going to read this story. The follow-up from 2021. Uh, do we need to vote on the that last one? I know it's been three minutes, but if you remember the story, let's see if we hate that author. Thank you, Patchy. Without you, I am nothing. Patchy Chads, rise up. I drank Sprite as you were doing that? What the fuck are you... <laughs> People will just post anything in the chat. <laughs> okay. Uh, looks like about 60% of you hate that guy. That's fine. It, no more dating mentally ill women. Okay? Uh, you'd be better off alone. New story! Hello, Monkey. I hope that you're doing well. My name is Gretchen, and I am writing this as a follow-up to a Depression Chamber entry I submitted about three years ago. I am proud to say that it aged like milk, and it ruined any self-respect I had remaining after re-watching it. <laughs> I wish I remembered what the story was. In this brand new collection of Jibber Jabber, I will try to approach this follow-up in a way that is helpful to anyone who can relate to my autistic ramblings. I am sorry in advance, as this ended up somehow being longer than my original submission. As a refresher, if you are fortunate enough to not have experienced my first entry, or you are blessed and don't remember it, it was an unhinged clusterfuck of my schizo posting about the suicide of my best friend. It was unedited, and I don't think I even proofread it. It was all one big paragraph, and best of all, I concluded it with a quote from BoJack Horseman, verbatim, with me fully believing that it went hard as fuck. Hey. In defense of BoJack Horseman... That that poem about suicide that I don't I don't remember how it goes is towards the end of the show, but that poem is very fucking good. Like the, the view from halfway down. That shit's a fucking banger. So if that was the quote, then I disagree. That that shit fucking rocks. Go go check out that scene if you haven't seen it. Uh, I was not at all thinking rationally, but to be fair, as a woman, I probably never have had a rational thought. <laughs> Uh, I love eating mulch. Uh, hey, somebody remembers you. <laughs> no, it's not Mavis. Jeez. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, uh, yeah, the view from halfway down. that That's like, you know, really makes you think about the regrets you might have after jumping off a bridge. Uh, to forward a response to the sort of thesis in my first entry, it does get better, but it always can and probably will get much worse. To directly address the filthy degenerate that I was at 17, the reason it was not getting better was that I was actively making everything worse for myself. Hating myself was my full-time personality during this time. Or my full personality during this time. Sorry to make you look like you repeated yourself. I think I wanted a punishment, which is probably why I used my real name, Cringe. Though a modest amount of self-hatred is sexy and good, I used it as a cope and as such never tried to improve myself. In my first response, I tried to describe all the hardships I was going through, mostly focusing on the guilt I felt around my friend's suicide, but I didn't acknowledge why I felt so guilty or what actions of mine resulted in my silly little downward spiral. Yeah, Gretchen is in the chat. She told me to read this. I don't know what her username was, though. Uh, I now believe some self-awareness about my behavior could have made me a better friend. This time in my existence... Uh, this time in my existence was defined by the isolation from the pandemic. Without access to my already limited social interaction, my melodramatic self completely disintegrated into a disgusting, crusty hell demon toxic to anything that dared approach it, ignoring anyone and everything good in my life. My overall post-pubescent mindset during this era was pure hedonistic degeneracy. 
Wow, all these big, complicated, eighth-grade-level words, man. I'm, I'm surprised I'm actually reading them <laughs> without, com co you know, my own degeneracy coming out. Uh, maybe it had something to do with starting birth control, but I became an absolute gooner-brained goblin. Disgustingly horny thoughts plagued my brain nearly every moment since I was around 12, and the isolation of the pandemic made it that much worse. I would sit and obsess over increasingly unhinged scenarios and fantasies, sometimes trying to draw them myself, as typically porn wasn't good enough for what I craved. I also had a boyfriend during this time. I heavily distanced myself from my friends at the time because my boyfriend didn't like me having friends that weren't him. He was insecure and thought I would cheat on him, so instead of pushing back, I went along with it to avoid conflict. He insisted on coming to anything that I wanted to do with my friends. If I tried to say no, he either sent photos of himself cutting himself or spam called me into giving in and hanging out with him, usually resulting in me ghosting my friends to be there for him. My ex constantly asked if I was planning on leaving him. He would cry, cut, and burn himself if I even hinted that I found something besides him attractive. It was so bad that he tried to kill himself after I said a random RX-7 I saw was sexy. That's a car, by the way. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> the goober didn't think he could compete with that sweet rotary. <laughs> Fuck. Jealous of a car? <laughs> Imagine if you guys watched the movie Cars and you said Toe Mater made you fucking horny. He, he probably would have killed himself. Even with this, it turned out he was cheating on me with a polycule of furries. I, I don't believe you. That can't be. Mostly over Discord and I think VR chat. Jesus. And Rezer says, I understand the BF. I married my car. Hmm. A polycule... I assume is polyamory on steroids, where it's just a big group of freaks fucking each other. This wasn't entirely out of the blue. I not only knew that he was a furry, but also a full-on trans species therian dragon identifying. So you can imagine it was a pretty big ego blow to not even be good enough for someone who has dragon dysphoria. Live and learn, I guess. Word of advice, if you have a significant other who's constantly up your urethra about you cheating, there's a good chance it's a projection of a guilty conscience and you should steal their car. I would talk with my friend, the dead one who this is about, pretty regularly before this and after this little scandal, and we were planning on hanging out after I isolated for two weeks. Homie was a type 1 diabetic, funny anecdote, when we were like 13 and 14, we got banned from, sa from a safe way because he had to give himself insulin, and the staff thought we were tweakers shooting up in the produce section. Live and learn, this is a sonic fanfic? Oh fuck. If it's gonna end with like the reveal of Shadow, I'm just gonna end the stream. <laughs> uh, after my ex found out about us planning on hanging out without him involved, he had a complete breakdown and claimed that I was emotionally cheating on him, implying that we were both cheaters and that I couldn't be mad at him. I didn't want to lose the one s source of reliable dick, so I went along with it and ghosted my friend when we were supposed to hang out, which should have been our first in-person interaction in half a year, and I ghosted him. Within the same month, my friend was gone, kaputs bye-bye, all because I gave in to what my man wanted because it was easy, and I abandoned my friend for dick. Homie was all alone, and I left him. Jedi Muffin super chatted to say, I got a show idea, you manimal bigs work at a mall. It's probably been 10 full years since I've talked to manimal. To be, to be quite honest. Almost ten full years. My ex was the only person who I confided in at this point, as I shut everyone else out. It didn't help that he was my first encounter with Coitus, so I had weird issues with him popping the cherry, like I was used and would never be good enough for anyone else. After the death of my friend, my man's only consolation was to ask if I was going to... if I was going the same way. Uh, he did start paying more attention to me after Homie's death, but 
only to constantly remind me how it would kill or how it would break him if I killed myself. Or if I relapsed in any form, I used to be a bit of a pill fiend, but that makes me look too silly, so ignore that. The formerly mentioned hatred he had for me doing things without him came back swinging when my friend's funeral came. The only thing he said to me that day was, I hope you have a good time, which in retrospect well, isn't that bad, but something about it made me feel so alone when he said it. That's a weird thing to say before going to a funeral. Uh, the funeral was less than a week after my friend passed. It all happened within minutes, it seemed. I was too afraid of feeling what was happening, so I listened to the entirety of Mr. Bungles' self-titled album during the funeral. Bad idea, as now sometimes I cry to fucking Mr. Bungle. I don't know what that is. Uh, his mom and sister's screams and cries still make me feel sick when I think about them. I cannot imagine the pain a mother must feel when her child rips themselves away from her as he did. His mom couldn't even walk. She was held up by three different people just so she could make it into the cemetery with the rest of the progression. Anyways, blah blah, I hope this added some context to my original submission. As in my first schizoid rambling, I said that I felt responsible without ever saying why. I feel responsible because I ghosted him without considering what I was doing and how that would make a friend feel. Sure, he was lonely. Sure, yeah, he was spiraling down a hole of substance abuse. And yeah, he constantly hinted at wanting to die. But I thought he was like me and would never do it. We both had been friends for over half a decade and constantly coped with each other about how much we hated life. And my stupid ass thought because I was too pussy to take control and take myself out that he never would either. Woman moment. Mr. Bungle being your trigger is rough. I'm going to have to Google this one. To try to steer back to my main point, if I had just continued to engage with non-brain rot interests and things I enjoyed and reflected on how my relationship was not only bad for me but those around me, it could have been so much easier to get through the death of my friend. I could have been there for my friend instead of just going along with what was easy. I chose to lock myself away in guilt and shame, so yeah, don't do that I guess, get good. In my first submission, I stated, I don't like to identify myself with the labels I've been given. I personally believe it's unhealthy to have depression or bipolar or whatever mental illness as a personality trait. I don't know what in Christ's name I was trying to say, but since this statement, I have found that going along with my clinical diagnosis of bipolar 2 is based and helped me understand my unhinged patterns. And it has also led me to many years of a plethora of bitches and also hoes. Mumkey, when you said that bipolar is better than depression because at least sometimes you're hyperproductive, I damn near shitted myself because I have been saying that for years and everyone thought it was a cope. For anyone not blessed, bipolar, you should consider doing meth as a supplement for mania. You can thank me later. Yeah, they should invent a bipolar that doesn't have the depressed part. Just the part when you're like really hyper and, uh, and excited and want to do stuff. Can I just have that part all the time? Not saying that I have either one, but that'd be pretty fucking cool. I think it's just called happiness. <laughs> they should invent happiness. <laughs> okay. Uh, since 2021, I don't think I've grown much. In fact, in a lot of ways, I am worse. This is very melodramatic, but it's my depression chamber and I get to choose the cringe. Back when, then, I still regularly felt feelings and emotions, and now I only feel numbness and severe anxiety. And any anger or happiness only comes during my short bursts of mania. I tell myself I've changed, but the rot within me still festers. I can sit and yap about how my poor habits led to my suffering, yet I still prefer to isolate myself out of fear of fucking up again. I don't like having friends now, even though I long for social connection. I'm not a good person and I will find a way to hurt them or abandon them. I say this and yet I still don't try to, to better my social life because I am a coward. Taking meth probably cancels out your bipolar. Taking meth cancels out your life. I don't know, I've seen uh, some people on meth. They seemed pretty happy to be alive. Uh, I've 
have been distancing myself in the fun and cool world of college level ivory tower dick sucking. I've switched majors three times, ranging from forensic chemistry to drum set performance to now environmental engineering. I have attended four different colleges slash universities all outside of my home state as I try to run away. I like to keep starting over and trying to reinvent myself. I feel like I will inevitably fuck it all up, so it is best to keep moving until the music stops. I know this copium will not sustain me for long, but I don't care. Get ready, America. Here comes the next great woman in STEM. I feel like I am just biding my time until my close family passes so I can disappear. As I stated earlier, I love my parents, but they are both approaching their 60s and neither live particularly healthy lifestyles. When they're gone, I can leave without hurting anyone. My biggest fear in life is to hurt someone like I did, and I don't know if I can ever face my fear. I feel alone, but at the same time, I think it's for the best. Mumkey, since you listened to at least part of my original submission, I just wanted to say I appreciate how kind you were when suffering through my unedited slop. As Kino mo oh, was Kino Corner on that episode? As Kino mocked my horrific grammar and melancholy attitude, you somehow kept a straight face and at least put up a front of empathy. I know that you are intended to be some flavor of English teacher, very zesty. What? <laughs> Does that mean I'm gay? <laughs> I guess. And I appreciate you approaching submissions with an angle of constructive criticism instead of mockery. Well, if I just shit on everybody, nobody would submit a story. <laughs> so I have to pretend to care. <laughs> I remember how hard my stomach dropped when I realized that you'd posted my submission. Six months of regret later, a beautiful Christmas present for me and all the world to enjoy was bestowed upon our quivering ears. Why'd she call you zesty? I guess English teachers are all gay, which is, you know, it's probably pretty close to the truth. <laughs> uh, on the day of your long-awaited return to the depression chamber, on the day of the birth of the son Jesus Christ, you chose to share my story with the world. Uh, on this holy day when I had trusted you with my most vulnerable moment, you had motherfucking Kino Corner read it in his gay voice while you took a tinkle. <laughs> Oh man, Simeon Piss Piss Boy Jimmy, die, you loose urethra having fuck. You should get your booty hole stimulated to make sure you don't have ass cancer pee pee man. You might be right about that one. Uh, Big Perp donated $9.99 to say zesty and it got 16 thumbs up immediately, which I think is more thumbs up than the stream even has. So good job. Uh, okay, anyway, I do not regret my submission, even though listening to it makes me want to circumcise myself with a pair of dull garden shears. Yeah, uh, ugh. That, ew. That's a female circumcision. That's fucking a clit cut. That's a rough one. It's kind of cool to look at my past self in such a sad, pathetic, and vulnerable state. Hey, I know the feeling better than anybody. It feels good to burden someone else with your sins. Does listening to other people being pathetic make you feel better about yourself? If I were you, I would make a scripture of all the stories and study them <laughs> to grasp this subgenre of human behavior. If you're not into that, you should try going in going to rehab. People love their love to expose their darkest sins just to get a little bit of attention. In some seriousness, I hope that in some way the whole depression chamber arc has helped you. As stated, I tend to not talk to people, but I like to feel less alone in my fuck-ups and I appreciate you using this platform for this greater good in that respect. Reading all of this back now, I have no idea what the original point was. I think I started by wanting to say I'm better now, but I can't keep my trap shut. I do want to say that I admire you, Monkey, and I strive to be as creatively productive as you are. I hope someone got something out of this, and if not, I hope my schizoid ramblings made someone feel better about themselves. Thank you for your time. Happy January, the month of most suicides. Good night. God bless the troops. It's not illegal to spray tan a stranger's baby. And also, all of this was a copy pasta. Find it by googling child hit by train India full video. Hmm. <laughs> well, let's do a quick Google of that one.
That's right, the greater good of receiving super chats. That's the, the true goal. Not productive at all. How dare you, Pokey? I posted a new scripted video and gave you a stream today. The ungratefulness in this chat is despicable. Despicable. I'm the toothpaste Nikado Avocado Kid. Can you read my new story saying the N-word in a room full of black people? <laughs> Wait, how did five new ones come in in the last two minutes? You fuckers did not write a story in the last two minutes. You liars. What the hell? Why, how is it so long? Did, do people... Is that the strategy? You write your story and then wait until I'm literally live and send it to me then so it's at the fucking top? Yeah, put some R-E-S-P-E-K on Mumkey's name. I agree. And this looks like it's legit, so I guess I'll give him a shot. Uh, Jacob renewed his membership to the Measly Few and said, Can everyone like the stream? This is not an endorsement from Mumkey. Yeah, let's get those likes up. We want as many people to hear these stories as possible. Uh, this is saying the N-word in front of a room full of black people, mentally ill Latinas, fucking up my brother, and of course, the terrible reading teacher. <laughs> Patchy is uh, stealing Randy's line and saying everyone share the stream to social media. Uh-huh. Okay, hey Mumkey, it's Jimmy Jimmy Stein, aka Foot Nikado Avocado Fetish Guy. Believe it or not, that last story was a massive summarization. There's a fuck ton of shit I left out, so here are those things. I will be ordering these in story bits as they come to me instead of life chapters like last time. Yeah, Randy, it, I, you should not say that. So I, I'm, you're following orders just like the Nazis, Randy. I'm proud of you. If you missed that chamber, here is a synopsis. I was a lonely little kid before moving into an intellectually gifted program where I became normal. In fourth grade, I fell into a downward spiral where I became suicidal and depressed. I then downloaded Reddit and convinced myself I was a tranny. Then I moved to Texas for a year and became intensely popular for my intelligence and charisma, which also happened back in my home state of Arizona the next year. During this time, I red-pilled and started watching Mumkey. I then moved back to an intellectually gifted program because of a shitty teacher. Uh, after that, some things may still not make sense, but if that happens, hopefully Mumkey can explain it to you. Yeah, hopefully. Story 1. Saying the N-word in front of uh, in a room full of black people. So this story takes place during Chapter 5 of the last story, Becoming Red-Pilled. Okay. Like I said, it was incredibly infamous, or I was in incredibly infamous. One day, a crowd of black people walked up to me as I was sitting in the gymnasium. We were waiting for the coaches to finish attendance, which took an embarrassingly long time. They told me to go over and sit with them. I was worried I was going to be attacked. They surround me and tell me to recite, to recite Zoomer lines, such as, What up, ka? And do you stand on business G? Or something like that. Okay. I went along with it. As they laughed, I was just glad I was making people happy. Eventually, they asked me to say, what's good, N-word? <laughs> After some hesitation in searching the crowd for phones, I said it. Everyone was bursting out laughing. Honestly, this story isn't really that important, just funny as hell. Around this time, I began to think of black culture as degenerate, <laughs> uh, specifically American black culture. Uh, it has gone unrestricted for decades as people are scared to criticize it. I don't think they're scared to criticize it. Take rap, for example. With a few exceptions, rap is all about drugs, crime, and sex. That was all part of my red pilling. Okay, so we got what is now 40-year-old criticism of a genre. Big Perp now donated 10 to ask, can you mew? Now, I've, I've been told that mewing is some sort of facial exercise to make your chin bigger and that you're supposed to press your tongue to the roof of your mouth and swallow hard and i i do not under is that correct because i feel like i don't understand how that would change the shape of your chin so am i getting this wrong 
Because I, I tried it, but I didn't understand what I was doing at all. It might not be for me. I might just be stuck with Moonface or whatever's going on over here. It's all bullshit. Heartsy told me he legit does it like every day. So I don't know. Lift the back of your tongue up and it makes your double chin go. I don't even have a fucking double chin. It's completely irrelevant to me. Anyway. Uh, how did I never hear about mewing in 2014? I, I guarantee fucking tea you that was not a thing in 2014. That's made up. Anyway. Guys, I, I hit the treadmill twice a day. That's all I need. I don't need this fucking Zoomer made up bullshit. Anyway. Story two. Another reason why I left that school. So this takes roughly in the same time period. And is actually the reason my mother wanted me to leave that school. So leaving the D&D club, I had to take the late bus. There was some obese black girl <laughs> yelling. According to my latest Medea video, 80% of American black women are obese. So you know what? I believe the story. Uh, telling people to stay out of her territory like she was fucking Walter White. It was such an absurdist scenario. I questioned how this girl had so much unwarranted energy at the end of a long school day. I began hysterically laughing at her. You could tell her ego was hurt as she looked at me why I was laughing at her. I simply continued laughing at her as she looked embarrassed. I then got a text from my, from my mother on my flip phone telling me she could pick me up from school. I left the bus. Then some kid in his posse walked up to me. The kid who appeared to be the leader asked me, Hey yo, why are you laughing at my girlfriend? I calmly explained myself as the posse began circling around me. I thought they may fight me, but I stood my ground and de-escalated and the posse left me alone. Say her name? Uh, it, what? Sh Shaniquaberg? Is that gonna be her name? I thought they may fight me, but I stood my ground and de-escalated and the posse left me alone. When I regaled the story to my mother, she was unreasonably worried and wanted me to move schools. This isn't so important to me personally, but it was a key turning point that could add context to my previous story. This guy keeps getting surrounded by black men. Hopefully they don't go bodies. Hopefully. Oh no. Story three. My brother gets trannyized. Okay, this is a pretty similar to that story about that guy's friend turning trans because of Discord. Me and my brother's relationship has suffered since I moved to Texas. We basically just stay out of each other's way. When we do talk, we constantly fight and snarkily criticize each other. During my tranny phase, I was very open with him about my issues, which was a major mistake. Since he was only nine at the time, way too young for shit like that. When I was talking with him about it, he said he was non-binary. Nothing would come from that, uh, about from that, until multiple years later. During becoming red-pilled, my brother changed his profile picture to a tranny anime girl. I immediately recognized it because I used that same image years back. <laughs> I didn't know if it was a dare or not. I messaged him about it. It asking if it was a joke or something. He immediately blocked me. <laughs> what? <laughs> I talked to him in real life and he acted like he didn't know what I was talking about. So when he was in the bathroom, I checked out his computer. He had a Google chat with a lot of talk about being gay. It seemed totally serious. I checked his flip phone and he was watching YouTubers talking about being gay and trans. Could you watch YouTube videos on a flip phone? Uh, maybe I don't I don't recall maybe uh, I was scared as hell my brother was going down the same unfortunate path I was <laughs> there was nothing I could do to stop it to this day it may still be going on I have no idea this was basically all my fault for being so open with him I may have mentally fucked him I'm really scared about when he enters my middle school next year there are some mentally ill, suicidal trannies here. Uh, I really don't want my brother falling into that. Dude has an al cattle flip? I, I don't even know what word you're saying. Oh, Randy says not on his old Verizon phone. I do remember when I was in high school, one of my friends 
was browsing 4chan threads on his shitty flip phone where the screen is like this big. So you can see like one comment at a time. So I, I guess they did have internet right before the smartphones came out. Story four, all my female friends are mentally ill alcoholic Mexicans. Okay. Here's another one that basically, that's basically about other people. He was probably <laughs> looks maxing and mewing threads on his flip phone. Yeah. When I was in Texas, I took a choir class. The only person I was friends with in that class was this girl named Heidi. And that is her real name. There is a chance she is watching this. And honestly, if she is, she should write her own story. So shout out to Heidi. We're waiting for you. She was a shy Latina who always wore a mask. This was because she didn't want anyone to see her face. Even I... What, she, fucking Kakashi? This is before COVID? <laughs> okay. During our conversation, she basically spilled her life story to me. She had an alcoholic dad, literally every Mexican dad. Uh, she He would leave his bottles of beer around the house. She would drink them while he was passed out drunk. This was when I still had one foot in the tranny thing. I admitted my trannyness to her over Discord. Nothing really happened. She was the only person... See, I don't think flip phones and Discord really... I don't think there's a moment in time where they both existed. So I don't know the timeline of this story, but... Uh, nothing really happened. She was the only person I spilled my guts to in that era that didn't negatively affect me. I'll always kind of appreciate her for that. The next one that is in my current school is a more interesting story. I went on a secondary bus one day. Every seat was filled. The only person who let me sit next to them was an awkward girl. We exchanged a few words before I began reading a book. Like a week later, while I was waiting for my regular bus, she ran up to me and gave me a friendship bracelet. I found this utterly hilarious because I only said like 10 words to her. So either I accidentally wooed her, she's very lonely, or she ran out of people to make bracelets for. I now believe, surprisingly, it was the first option. She began sitting next to me and we had genuinely pleasant conversations. She confessed to me she was anorexic and alcoholic and also essentially never drank water. I remember giving her the only water she had drank in the last or in the past three months. I live in the Sonoran Desert, so water is quintessential to survival. She gave me her Discord account, but her handwriting was incredibly confusing, and the account name I was able to make out wasn't hers. To make things worse, I lost the note. Then I suppose she thought I ignored her Discord account on purpose, and we've been mutually ignoring each other ever since. It's not that hard just to go up and say, hey, I lost the note. Tucson brothers rise up. I find this a small tragedy in this era of my life. She was incredibly edgy, which made me connect with her. She also had an emotional transparency, which I found extremely admirable. Folks, why, why Discord? Whatever happened to phone numbers? You could just text her with your phone. Why are you fucking idiots always going on fucking Discord? What year do we live in? My fucking god! Just text the bitch! Story 5, can't go, can't even go a day without wanking off. Okay, a lot of you are gonna relate to this one. You don't have a phone number? I don't believe you. You had a flip phone with no number, you're just playing with it at that point. This story needs a couple exclaimers. Firstly, there. this was literally written at 5.04 a.m., so if it seems completely incoherent and rambly, please forgive me. Secondly, this and many of these following stories pick up after my main story was read on the show. <laughs> I need everyone to know that I pay for Nitro. I was inspired to stop masturbating by a video from Lieutenant Corbis. Lieutenant Corbis was essentially a preteen girl who made leafy style commentary videos and went on to make edgy and right wing video essays. One of the few videos from her far right catalog to survive Susanation was one of her detailing all the ways fapping makes society and men worse. It struck me on a deep level, a burst of motivation ran through my veins. 
I wanked off three hours later. <laughs> and did not leave much of an impact, I guess. Uh, I couldn't even go a day without cum cuminating. I did last one day twice. <laughs> the first time was like a dream. It felt like getting off it had instant effects. The second ended up pretty shit and the tranny brain worms came back. I don't know if I was just riding high on success the first day or suffering from withdrawal the second day. Maybe I'll try again, but maybe when my life stops falling into a downward spiral, one which I will continue to explain. <laughs> Randy in the chat just says, Say what? <laughs> Cum brain is a real thing. You people are all sick. Mumkey, is Leafy your biggest inspiration? God's honest truth, never once in my life have I watched a fucking Leafy video. Could not give less of a shit about him or anything that happened to him. That's more of a Turkey Tom. I think he was inspired by Leafy. Story 6, Cyberbullied on Google Meet. This is going to sound like B9 petty bullshit. And B9 is spelled B-E-N-I-N-E. -E. <laughs> okay. Uh, I keep saying okay, but that's really the only response to some of these words. But this is important, I swear. Go the few gifted kids there are in my school have a pretty tight-knit community. There's only 40 of us and basically everyone knows each other. About half of the kids are all on a Google Meet which each other. Google Meet and not Discord because a lot of gifted kids are incredibly sheltered and have helicopter parents. Good! A parent banning their child from Discord is probably why they're gifted! That's probably why they're successful and why you're writing a story to the depression chamber because you go on fucking Discord! Uh, I hate children so much. It, it's, I hate them so much. Okay. So even if they wanted Discord, they couldn't get it. I was invited to this Google Meet. For the sake of 100% honesty, I was removed for like four months for unknown reasons, then reinstated. Gifted program in 2024 equal not on Discord. So fucking true. Now don't ban Discord. Ban children from the internet. Straight out. If you're If you're younger than 16... You're not even allowed to know that the internet exists. That, that's my... If I was the Elliot Roger uh, dictator, instead of putting all the women in concentration camps, I would just not let children know that the internet exists. Honestly, I grew up without it. My life was pretty damn good as a child. So, that's proof enough. My anecdotal evidence. Uh, where were we? Uh, so the totally mentally retarded thing about Google Meet is that anyone in a chat room can remove anyone else as long as they're not a space manager. So this one girl who I'll call the whore keeps getting removed. I start removing her too. She has no idea it's me. Meanwhile, the whore and her friends, the dyke, the owner of the chat, and the goblin, the only one out of these three I actually dislike despite the rude names, constantly bully me. They gaslight me into thinking everyone hates me. It was incredibly blatant, and many even pointed it out. But they were this but they were steadfast. Eventually the dyke caught me in the act of removing the whore and the goblin and removed me from the server. They essentially embarrassed me in front of everyone. This was essentially a loss of some innocence. Not a personal innocence, but an innocence of the idea that this gifted social circle was supporting and relatively positive. This is why I believe this event to be important in my life and easily the most impactful story within this entry. In general, that server was just toxic. I think some semblance of anonymity and depersonalization paired with seeing these people every day is a recipe for disaster. You'll start petty drama on the chat rooms and have to work together on a school project by day. It was utter hell. But that damn chat room crossed one line I cannot tolerate. It was fucking up my relationship with Andrew. I invited him to a call and pressured him into saying the N-word. <laughs> I asked him in to yell the N-word, but he wouldn't do it. I was too autistic to realize he was very uncomfortable. He left and I haven't spoken to him since. OP is a silly billy. Uh-huh. 
Story seven, we're getting close to the end, folks. Terrible reading teacher. Yeah, at the age of 16, open the floodgates. They can go on Facebook. <laughs> I guess not really much of a floodgate. They can go on Facebook and they can only add their family. And then, you know, by 18, they can go on like YouTube. Discord, maybe we'll restrict that to like 24 and up. Okay, I'll put some more reading teacher stories in here, then end this small entry into the depression chamber. It was the end of the first quarter in school and we were playing some multiplayer math game in class. Some kids were starting a verbal fight with me over the game for no good reason. Because of this conflict, the terrible reading teacher sent me outside the classroom even though I didn't start the conflict. But honestly, I wasn't that mad because I just wanted those people to stop yelling at me and I was just chilling outside anyway. Then some lady I've never met came up to me. She asked me why I was standing outside. I gave her a basic explanation of what happened. She then said bluntly, you aren't the type of kid to get in trouble. I had never met this woman in my life, so I was taken aback by how sure she was that I wasn't the type of kid to get in trouble. She then suggested that I stay outside since I like it better. She was talking like I'm autistic or something. She then brought me inside and started talking to my reading teacher. She looked threatened by this mystery woman. Later, I looked at the school's website and I can't find her anywhere. End. Sorry for the rushed ending, but I've become uber busy recently. I hope this adds context to my Nikado Avocado life story. Okay. That's the end of that one. Uh, homeboy Jared Jams is letting me know that his YouTube channel was deleted. That's too bad. Uh, let's see if we hate that author. Do we hate this kid? Let's see. Beat the Google Meet. <laughs> Okay. Monkey doesn't write these, right? Could you imagine if I wasted my time making up stories? That'd be rough. I'd, what a waste of my time that would be. Maybe one day I'll write a story and just try to slip it in there, see if anybody notices. That looks like about 69% of you hate this kid. That's probably fair. Doing my marine bio homework while I listen to you. So now, Travis Lawless, I want you to know when you're taking that marine bio test, you're going to start thinking of these pathetic fucking children. And I hope you start giggling in class. I'd love a full video on the Simeon Jimmy dictatorship. What would it look like if he had unlimited power? I should. I should write up a manifesto of what I would do and then read it on here. That's a great idea. I do like that. Mumkey would need therapy if he wrote all the stories. If I wrote them, they certainly wouldn't have these typos in them. And Jacob W donated to say goo goo meat. Instead of Google meat. Mind Mumkey. Spin the propeller, okay. There we go. Uh, we've been going over an hour and a half. You guys know that's when we typically end the depression chamber. Uh, but hey, you know what? The good news is there's a new episode of the Bazinga Boys coming out tomorrow. Although, uh, it, would it be smart to have another podcast that's over an hour long come out like fucking 15 hours from now? Should I push it back to Wednesday? Because then there's a new Is It Kino on Tuesday, new Monkey and Big Show on Thursday. It's just too much long content for your little brains to absorb. I'm working too hard, folks. Working way too hard. Monkey has been dropping hints for years that he's strands. Yeah, they're very subtle. Push it to Wednesday. Good thinking. Members only tomorrow? It's already up for members. Members have had access to that since Wednesday. After you end the stream, turn down the brightness on the TV. Let's try that right now. Let's let's see if that fixes it. Let's see. Uh, 
There, is it gonna look better now? Now I'm watching myself do it. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got into this chin situation. Uh, I don't, I don't know if it's helping. <laughs> I don't think it's helping. Looks way better. Really? <laughs> I don't think it does. I guess I wasn't paying that close attention. It's not that it's on a delay. It's just that the stream is like 10 seconds behind. Look like a Wii Fit character. Hey, I'll be honest. Of all the Smash Bros characters to jerk off to, Wii Fit Trainer is up there. Like up there with Zero Suit Samus and Meta Knight. Those are my top three. Turn off the saturation. Now, when I watch uh, Shogun tonight, now my TV's going to be all fucked. <laughs> you guys are ruining it. Let's see, which one? What am I looking for? Let's go to cinema. Ooh, okay. Kind of makes it sepia. Hmm. Oh, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't think this is ever going to look good. Maybe that's part of the joke. It's totally intentional that it looks like dog shit. I've heard that Shogun is the white savior Japanese woman sex show. Is that true? The white guy is basically a slave to the Japanese people. He's not much of a savior. Like, he's getting shit on constantly, and he just wants to go home. Uh, should we read one more short story that just came in that's hopefully a joke? Because it says, uh, sexually harassed by another male student in high school. Not sexually. Sexually. I assume there's a saxophone involved. Fuck it, if people are still here after I said we're going to end it, I might as well read two more paragraphs. What ep am I on? Uh, whatever the new one is of uh, Shogun. Shogun is BWC the show. I, he does uh, cuck a Japanese samurai, but only because they thought he was dead. So it's whatever. Saxophone. Yeah, saxophone. Uh, this is sexually harassed. Hey, Simeon, I previously sent a submission under the pseudonym Bob Berger, but I did, not I did not mention a few stories for the sake of time with that message. And here's one I wanted to share. Basically, in high school, I lost a lot of weight after my friend got with a girl I had a crush on. So I started deliberately under eating to go through an emo phase and also started doing pull ups every day. After losing so much weight, I still had a lot of loose skin around my midsection, as you might imagine. A year later, when I was a senior, I had to take a gym class. In that class, I was frequently bullied by another male student a year younger than me. That's weird because the name on the email is a female name, but it is what it is. Uh, who would constantly slap my ass and make very crude remarks? For clarification, we were both straight. It continued throughout the whole year. Nothing much came of it because I shrugged it off, but a year or so after I graduated, I found out he was arrested for hanky-panky with a minor. He better be thankful I was never called as a character witness. Ironically, a female student in the same class referred to me as a twig w once or twice in a non-demeaning way. Welp, that's it. Bob Berger out. Okay, what a great story to read. I'm glad we're going to end it on a good one. Please don't torture us, Family Guy sucks. I should put Family Guy on the TV. <laughs> okay, let's do it. If my phone will ever fucking work. Such a piece of shit. Such a piece of shit. Well, maybe we'll do Family Guy funny moments next time. I just, I refuse to buy a new phone until it literally just does not work at all. Sometimes I, basically once a day I have to reset it because it'll freeze. So, it... Every piece of technology I own is actually a complete piece of dog shit and pisses me off on a daily basis. Phones are expensive? Yeah, well, it's probably my fault for buying like the Google Pixel S or like whatever the small one, 3A, whatever the fuck. A family man moment. Purple? Purple Colonel, don't you dare! I think I got in trouble because of you today, Purple. I I posted some mean things in reply to you on a comment this morning, and then YouTube gave me, like, a comment strike. They said, like, you were being uh, abusive and mean in your comments, and if you keep it up, we're going to delete the channel. I've never seen that in my life. 
And the only comment that I posted that was mean was to you, Purple. So, you're reporting my shit, Purple? Is that it? Even though they didn't delete it, so I don't know what's going on. The victim blaming, don't put this on me. Yeah, yeah. Basically, I said I'm not a raging homo, and I guess that's too mean for YouTube. We never had a vote if Gretchen Elliott is hated. Okay, let's go for it. If you guys remember that story from a story ago. Do we hate the Gretchen author? YouTube protects their big hot creators like me. Hey, I don't see no I don't see no check mark next to your name, Purple. Okay, you're not respected like the Simeon Jimmy channel. And we've got approximately 72% of people saying yes, they hate Gretchen. That's too bad. Okay, folks. Uh, Aggie will be here in a few days' time. We're going to make a bunch of Kino content for you. I think I'm all out of uh, mailbag packages. Like, we're going to do the rest of them. There's probably like 10 to 15 left, so I think we'll just nail them all in one big video. And if we never get any new packages to my P.O. box, I guess that'll be the end of mailbag. You know, it's whatever. If you guys want to submit stuff, go for it. The P.O. box is 473 uh, Ames, Iowa. Zip code 50010. Uh, but maybe that series will be over, finally. It only took me like nine years to open everything. Uh, join the secret Mumkey Gooner Discord today. Yep, go to patreon.com slash mumkey and sign on up. We'll be waiting for you. Another great stream. Thank you, Jacob. Finally, some support in this chat. Finally. Uh, I'll see you next time, folks. And, wait, I'm gonna do a vote. One more vote. Should I postpone Bazinga Boys from Monday to Wednesday so that your sub feed doesn't have a million things? Should we postpone Bazinga Boys? Because if you guys are willing to, to watch it tomorrow, I'll post it, but it might be too much. Great stream, will share it on social media. Uh, looks like the people want their Bazinga Boys ASAP. Because we got 66% saying no. Okay, I'll post it tomorrow. That's fine. If you guys can handle... And I posted two videos today, if this one counts. Gonna post again tomorrow. Gonna post again on Tuesday with Izzy Keen. I'm gonna post again on fucking Thursday. Probably gonna be doing this shit again on Sunday. It's just a busy life for the monkey. We'll share the stream on Grinder. Okay, I need to get the hell out of here. So bye, everybody.